tonight I feel to do something a little differently than a typical sermon, and that is just to progress through Scripture. Perhaps it's a story you've heard before, but this must never be a story that becomes old to us or loses its power and its majesty to us. In preparing, I thought, well, I could begin to lay out what happened, but then I remembered that Scripture can always do a better job than I can. And this is an apostolic church, and so we love Scripture. And so tonight, without referencing and without breaking, I'm just going to read through a series of Scriptures. Uh, and as we wrap up that time, I've asked Bishop to come and to lead us in communion. We're going to take communion together as a church The Holy Ghost is here already. Starting from the beginning. It was prophesied from the very get go that I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, upon the colt, the foal of an ass. And I said unto them, if ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter, In the house of the Lord. Who hath believed our report. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground. For he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he hath done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. 
He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame. And spitting. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she brake the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? And it for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? For she hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She is that come therefore, or rather aforehand, to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world... This also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith to them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go, say to the good men of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And the disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and say to him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and brake it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank all of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that, I am risen. I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Jesus saith unto him, verily, I say unto thee that this day, even in this night before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. 
But he spake the more vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. And they came to a place which was called named Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, sit ye here while I pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And he saith unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, sleep on now and take your rest. It is... Enough, the hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straight away to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men laid hold on him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even unto the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made without hands. And within three days, I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in their midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him. And to say unto him, prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming herself, she looked upon him and said, Thou also was with Jesus 
of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. And the maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after they that stood by said again to Peter, surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean and thy speech agreeeth thereto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him before the cock crowed twice. Thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto them, Thou sayest it. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered, Nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus answered yet nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with them, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said unto them again, What will ye then that I shall do with him who ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees, worshiped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place of Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him crucify they two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, ah, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days. Save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests, mocking, said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, 
There was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth for Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, They break not his legs, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true that he might believe for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him should not be broken. And again, another scripture saith they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the less, and of Joseph and Salome, and who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. And calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher which was hewn out of a rock, and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. I break from the reading of Scripture to provide some details of the suffering of our Savior. Up all night, Experiencing agony in the garden. Praying so earnestly and intensely that great drops of sweat mingled with blood began to run down his brow. Luke, the physician, records that angels of the Lord came and ministered to him. Such was his state already weakened by the burden he was about to face. Our Savior was facing sin and sickness for the very first time. He endured an illegal trial, lying witnesses. He's blindfolded. He's spit upon. He is beaten with the hands. He is slapped by the servants. He's led in front of a Roman governor. He's sent to Herod. He's sent back again. He is flogged. And I read, it is at this point that Jesus suffers a severe physical beating. During a flogging, a victim was tied to a post, leaving his back entirely exposed. The Romans used a whip called a flagrum or a flagellum, which consisted of small pieces of bone and metal attached to a number of leather strands. The number of strikes is not recorded in the Gospels. The number of blows in Jewish law was set in Deuteronomy 25 and 3 at 40, but was later reduced to 39 to prevent excessive blows by a counting error. The victim often died from the beating. Roman law did not put any limit on the number of blows given. And during the flogging, the skin was stripped from the back, exposing a bloody mass of muscle and bone. Extreme blood loss and pain occurred from this beating, weakening the victim. Perhaps 
to the point of being unconscious. Jesus is now untied from the pole and led to the hall of the Roman soldiers where they bring out a robe of purple and a crown of thorns to mock this Jewish king. They begin to bow the knee in mockery and spit upon the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They beat him with a rod which was to be his scepter. He is beaten so badly that his face is marred beyond recognition. And finally, at this point, he is expected to carry the own, his own crossbeam to his place of crucifixion, estimated at 650 yards away. This crossbeam was believed to weigh between 80 and 110 pounds. His body is already severely broken and Jesus collapses under the weight. And now the truly excruciating portion. A simple but drastically effective tool of execution. It uses the body's own survival instinct against itself. It was not atypical for a healthy victim of crucifixion to suffer for two to four days. He was led to the cross. His arms were stretched out. First the left and then the right. A nail was driven through each wrist, shooting pain up each arm. There was a small crude seat that supported the weight of the body in the dropped position. The legs were flexed and the knees were rotated laterally so the feet could be nailed to the vertical portion of the cross. It appears likely that the mechanism of death and crucifixion was suffocation. With the weight of the body being supported By the arms, the arms being pulled upward, the shoulders being pulled out of joint, the intercostal and pectoral muscles are now stretched and the movement of these muscles is constricted by the weight of the body hanging. It becomes exceedingly difficult to breathe. With these muscles stretched, the respiratory bellows become relatively fixed and over a period of time you become very short of breath. And so with your feet nailed to the cross, there was only one thing to do. You must rise up off of that seat and push up with your feet to straighten your arms and gain relief and allow your lungs to begin to fill and expand again. But the pain of a nail through your feet would begin to elevate until you could no longer stand the pain pain of the nail through your feet. You could no longer have uh, the pain of cramps beginning to form in your legs and your legs would give way and your body would collapse back onto the sedulum. And once again, your shoulders would be pulled tight. Your chest would be pulled tight and suffocation would begin anew. Thus, the victim alternates between a difficulty breathing and lifting up against the pain in his legs and goes back and forth until he eventually is too exhausted to lift himself anymore. The lungs begin to collapse. Jesus is already severely dehydrated and low on blood. His body is in shock. His heart is beating very rapidly, trying to compensate for the lack of oxygen and increased carbon dioxide. Fluid builds up around his heart, filling his lungs. And the Pharisees concerned with the coming Passover, they ask Pilate for an act of mercy. The soldiers come with an iron club and they interrupt this process of horrific execution and torture by breaking The legs of the victims. No longer can they push against their desire to breathe. It is now impossible for them. And suffocation sets in more quickly. Let's all stand together. We know how this ended. But they didn't. We know that in just a few short days... We are going to be celebrating and indeed we even look forward in this moment and celebrate the fact that there's an empty tomb. But tonight. We remember. I read three more verses as Bishop comes to lead us in communion. He is despised and rejected of men. 
a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. 